Hello everybody! Today we're going to look at the big screen adaptation of In the Heights. This was directed by John M. Chu and stars Anthony Ramos and Melissa Barrera. Based on the Tony Award winning musical of the same name, In the Heights tells the story of the predominantly Dominican community in the Washington Heights neighborhood of New York City and their various dreams for a better life. And the story is narrated by a young man named Usnavi, whose father gave him that name after coming to this country and seeing it on the side of a ship. What he actually saw on the side of that ship was U.S. Navy. To be fair, it is still a better name than what Elon Musk gave his child. I did not know a whole lot about this movie going in, apart from the fact that it was based on a musical that had won a ton of awards, so I more or less went in cold. And I ended up really liking this. This has a really strong cast with people who can both sing and act very well, and I did recognize a few of them. Of course, Lin-Manuel Miranda originated the role of Usnavi on Broadway. He does have a small role in this movie as the Piraguero. He did not want to play Usnavi again as he felt, and I think rightfully so, that he's a bit too old for the part now. Chris Jackson, who played George Washington in Hamilton, also has a small part here as an ice cream truck driver. Anthony Ramos was also in Hamilton, so I knew what he was capable of. Of course, I've seen Jimmy Smiths in lots of things, so I know he's a good actor. I did not know he could sing. That was a pleasant surprise. Corey Hawkins, who plays Benny. I've seen him in quite a few things, like The Walking Dead and Straight Outta Compton. Again, did not know he could sing. I was not as familiar with Melissa Barrera and Leslie Grace, who play Vanessa and Nina, respectively, but they were both great. And I believe this was Grace's film debut, which makes her performance all the more impressive. This is a really engaging story about a group of hardworking people struggling to survive in a world that couldn't be bothered to give two shits about them. They keep hoping and praying for that big break so they can finally live out their dreams, which many people can relate to. And they struggle with poverty and racism and microaggressions, which sadly is also something many people can relate to. The music is exactly what you would expect from a Lin-Manuel Miranda joint. As soon as that opening number started up, I'm like, yep, I know this style. I know who wrote this. Not only are the songs good, but the direction of the musical numbers is fantastic. One thing I keep complaining about with the Disney live action remakes is the House of Mouse keeps hiring directors who do not know how to shoot musical movies. That is not a problem here. Chu gets it. Some of the highlights for me, of course, the title track just right off the bat does a great job of showing off every detail of this neighborhood and the people who live there. Plus, it's a fun song. Nome Diga, which takes place in a hair salon and is basically gossip set to music, was really good. 96,000, which takes place in a public pool, just... Wow, the word ambitious seems woefully inadequate for that number. When the Sun Goes Down, which had Benny and Nina dancing on the side of the building, which is a really cool effect. And Paciencia y Fe, which is Olga Meredith's chance to shine as Abuela Claudia. I believe she was the only person from Broadway who reprised her role for the movie. Basically, we see her entire life flash before her eyes in an abandoned subway station while she's singing her ass off. It was great. I don't have a lot of bad to say about this movie, but I suppose there are a couple of things I can nitpick. Throughout the film, Usnavi and Vanessa have kind of a will-they-won't-they they thing going on, and there's a point where they're starting to lean pretty heavily into the will-they stage, and then all of a sudden they get into this big argument, and I wasn't really clear on why. It just seemed to me to come out of nowhere, and their reasons for fighting felt kind of forced, and I just really wasn't buying it. And to bring the story more in line with modern times, they added some stuff in there about DACA, and that by itself is fine, but the execution was a bit off. It felt like they threw it in there just for the sake of it, and then didn't really do much with it. It needed more. But other than that, this was really well made, stellar cast, great musical numbers. I liked it. As for whether I would recommend it, I think largely depends on whether you're a fan of Lin-Manuel Miranda's style. If you are not, this is not going to change your mind, but if you are a fan of his style, I would say it's definitely worth seeing in a theater if you can do so safely, or on HBO Max if you can't. And that's all I have to say about In the Heights. Till next time, take care.